What's up, everyone? My name's Reed. I'm a part of the virtual production team here at Copilot. Today, I'm gonna show you how to build a hyperlapse inside of Unreal Engine 5. We all hate long tutorial videos, so let's jump right in. For this tutorial, we're using the city sample pack from the Unreal Engine Marketplace. I left the link in the description below if you don't have it. Once you have the project open, let's go ahead and open up the big city level map. Once it loads, let's move around to your starting point. This is a very similar process to how you'd shoot a hyperlapse in real life. The key here is to find a focal point that you can stay locked on for the duration of the hyperlapse. For this, I'm gonna choose the building at the end of the frame here. I'm gonna place the camera low just so we can see more motion blur as the camera's moving. Once you're ready to go with your starting point, we're gonna go ahead and create a new Cine camera actor. Be sure to rename your camera. For this, I'm gonna use hyperlapse test. Now, let's add a new level sequence. Rename this as well if you want, and then open it up and drag the new Cine camera actor into the sequence. Before we start, we wanna make sure that this looks the most like a real life hyperlapse. So we're gonna change the frames per second for the sequence to 24 frames per second. This will allow us to get motion blur inside of the sequence. Now let's adjust the length of the sequence. For this, I want a 10 second hyperlapse. So I'm gonna adjust the length of the sequence to 240 frames. Okay, next up, let's open up the cinematic viewport. Make sure that your camera track is selected in sequencer, and then we're gonna open up the three by three grid. What's nice about the cinematic viewport is that it's very similar to a camera. So if you're coming from a photography or a filmmaking background, this interface should look really familiar. And now we're ready to get started with the camera movement. First up, because we already selected the starting point, we're just gonna set the keyframes and the transforms. All right, so we have the starting point. Now we're gonna move the playhead and sequencer all the way to the end of the track. And now it's the fun part. So you're gonna use the arrows and you're gonna move the virtual camera towards the end point of the shot. When I do this, I like to visualize the actual shot itself. So this helps me see the camera movement and make sure that it looks realistic. All right, now that we're at the end of the shot, I'm just gonna set the transform keyframes just like we did before. All right, let's hit play. It's looking pretty good. We have the movement of the camera done. It looks really good. But the one thing that I'm noticing is that it just looks like we're in a video game engine. So one thing we can do to help with this is add motion blur. If we open up the details panel, we're gonna search blur. For this, I'm using 0.75 for amount and 10 for target FPS, but feel free to play around with whatever works best for you. I totally made this up in the spot and it works best for my scene. For some reason, Unreal Engine loves keeping the keyframes at a cubic interpolation. It makes the cinematics look kind of like a game cutscene. So for this, we're gonna change it to linear. All right, so this is looking awesome. I'd say for 90% of you, you are done. Depending on the environment you're using, this hyperlapse looks fantastic. However, watching this back, it looks great, but you'll notice that the sun in the scene isn't moving like it would in real life. When you shoot a hyperlapse, it's essentially a moving time lapse. When you shoot a time lapse, it shows passing in time, and we don't see that here. But we're perfectionists here, so let's make this perfect. Time to jump into blueprints, baby. All right, let's open up the level blueprint. We're gonna create a new event tick. Do that by right clicking and typing in event tick. Hit compile and hit save. Now we're gonna create a new float variable. This is gonna to be to control the sun in the scene. Now that we've done that, let's rename it to sun speed. Now let's create a multiply node to our event and get a reference to our float variable that we just created. And then connect it to the second input of the multiply node. So when we open up the detail panels on the right, you'll notice that it's not actually showing up in there. We're gonna hit compile and save. And there we have it, it's sitting right there. So I'm gonna type in 10 here and then hit compile and save again. Next step is to create a rotator node and then reconnect the multiply node to the Y axis. Now we're gonna drag off the return value pin and we're gonna add a local rotation node. If it's not showing up, just turn off context sensitive. And now we're gonna go into the world outliner and get the name of the directional light that we're gonna reference for this. Let's drag it into your blueprint. Let's connect the pin of the directional light and connect it to the target pin of the add actor local rotation node 
and then connect the event node to the actor location rotation node. All right, so at this point, it should work. The one last thing we're gonna do here is comment our code. So what that means is let's just draw a box around here. This is essential in keeping your blueprints organized within Unreal Engine. And it's not something that's necessary for this project, but you should get used to doing it. Let's compile, save, and then finally going back into the engine. Now let's turn on simulate mode and hit play and voila. There it is. So we have the sun moving and now it looks like an actual time lapse and a pass into time as the camera's moving.